Good morning to everyone. Welcome to Today with Brian. And this is your host, Teacher Brian. So for today's episode, I'm going to be interviewing fellow English teachers. I'm going to be asking them their experience on ESL Classroom. I'll ask them to identify the challenges as well as their opportunities. Plus, they're going to describe their ELL students. What are the strengths and weaknesses of these young learners? What are their best practices as well that help them succeed in an ESL classroom? So let's get started with my first guest, Ma'am Ocampo. Good morning, Ma'am Ocampo. Hello, Sir Brian. Thank you for having me here in your show. So my experience on ESL classroom, the challenges and opportunities. Grade 5 and grade 6 in our schools are departmentalized. So grade 5 has nine sections, four of which I was in charge of teaching grade 5. And scored a school reading program that Monday should be an English speaking day for all learners of all other elementary schools. So I emphasize the importance of speaking English in my class, of course. And I want all my learners to practice speaking since I agree that speaking and communicating is important for them to develop their language skills. So one time, as I was discussing something, I had my lecture in front of the class and smiled at my learner for them to not to get nervous. I made sure to make an eye-to-eye -eye contact with them. Then I noticed this boy who is listening attentively in everything I say, but he always bends his head and looks on the floor as if he doesn't want to have an eye-to-eye -eye contact with me. So I asked everyone to respond to me in English, even though it was an English carabao, I allowed them. So I asked the boy of the, of the learning he did from me in the story I have read a while ago. She just looked at me. I repeated my question and rephrased it. I even translated it in Tagalog. For him to better understand but he still don't understand me and that's the time his classmates told me that he doesn't understand what i say because he is from antique he came from region six western Visaya. and then i found out his strength he is very willing to learn our language english and tagalog he is very sociable he is also intelligent and very talented and his weakness he is very conscious in his desire accent he is very unfamiliar with some his tagalog and english terminologies that we are using he cannot easily comprehend in the story we have read because he is, he is desire he cannot follow direction properly without the help of sign language so i make to use some languages so the best practices that I have applied to that particular learner of mine, I maximize the use of Google Translate English to Visaya language. I initiated many group activities, individual reporting, uh, the classmate for teacher call the peer tutoring, and of course the remedial classes. And that's all, Sir Brian. Thank you for in Thank you very much, Mamo Campo, for your sharing. Next up, let's call on Ma'am Dalupan for her sharing. Ma'am Dalupan, good morning. Good morning, Sir Brian. Uh, I'm happy to be here in your show. So the first question was, uh, what are your, the challenges that you encounter in uh, teaching English as a secondary language? So my first uh challenge since i uh, am a grade teacher so i have i have a pupil we're in uh she cannot even recognize the word so that is my a uh, big challenge it is a big challenge for me as a grade teacher because uh supposed to be that pupil uh those uh, letter recognition and word recognition are more level teacher, that is a big challenge for me so I, uh, my goal is to uh, lead this pupil to know how to read in grade six level. 
So it has happened when I was conducting a home home visitation this during this pandemic. So I started uh, to let her to read the short passage in the story. So she just started the manuscript. Then when I, when I asked her if she can read the sentence, she told me that she cannot read at, at, at all. So that is a big challenge for me. So that I encounter right now in my modular distance learning or the MDL. So the goal uh, for this challenge, so that this pupil be, will be able to read and hear. So since uh, it is uh, third quarter now, so I also conducted um, this uh, virtual pumustahan. And so far, I have this um, improvement. So the story was so sad for me because the child and the mother admitted that the child cannot read at all. So the very first step in teaching English as second language, as they are every teacher is a reading teacher. So even if I may, if even if I am a math and science teacher, although I am her advisor, so I am responsible for, uh, or I am accountable for her as a teacher. Mm. So the next question is, what are the strengths of the people? So the first one is willing to learn new things. So I am very proud that uh, some of my learners uh, are willing to cooperate. And the next is cooperative. To take so to take a rest so you will know something or you will learn something something from that and the next one is next trend is prior knowledge about the grammar so it is very important that our pupils has a prior knowledge about grammar and curiosity and the next strength was have their own perspective so every child is unique, so they have their own perspective. Uh, but in other turn, we have pupils that very slow in terms of uh, using grammar and uh, expressing themselves. And those um, accounts with their weaknesses. So the first weakness is grammar construction. But yeah, they, they are not particular on grammar, so that's why they commit grammar mistakes. And the next weakness is speaking is then to speak in France. And the next weakness, struggling readers. So that is my biggest problem here. So non-readers uh, in grade six level. Next is vocabulary. So they are not, uh, most of them are not familiar on some uh, words that they encounter or they lack vocabulary knowledge. And the last weakness was low comprehension level. So we're in low comprehension is one of the problem of Palo Alto Elementary School. That's why we conducted or we crafted different materials or best practices here in our school to cater those problems or weaknesses. So the, be the first best practices that we have is we crafted contextualized materials that was suited to the needs of the learners. So because we all know that not every learner are performing. So that's why we have uh, materials that suited to the needs of learners. Next best is that we have trainee. So project trainee stands for each reading through adequate and improved needed materials effectively. So that's that is the meaning of the acronym trainee. So in this program, we cater struggling learners or readers. So we aim or the goal of this program is to uh let these struggling readers to read or to be able to read and comprehend. The next one is conducted home visitation. So in this um, practice, we'll be able to know the situation or the status of our learner. So that is one way and um, getting to know them and their family as well. And then next best practices that we have conducted online kumustahan since we are not a we're not able to conduct 
home visitation because of our health problems and health situation because of the pandemic. So we are now uh, using the different types of platforms or online platforms to uh, to uh, uh, to to make uh, the bridge to our learner. So in order to reach out, so we need to conduct online kumustahan. And then the next best practices that we hope or best practice, we have we provided reading materials with comprehension questions. So since we have uh, low comprehension levels of, of pupils and non-readers also as well, so we provided a uh, comprehension uh, question and we have that short story with comprehension question to be able to uh, fill the gap of this problem. So that's all, uh, Sir Brian. Thank you for having me here in your show. That's all. Thank you very much, Ma'am Dalupan, for that story. And now let's go to our third guest. Ma'am Wagan, good morning. All right, so thank you so much, Sir Brian. So um, actually, I've had lots of experiences in teaching. So as we all know, teaching English is never an easy job to do, especially teaching those students who are non-native speaker. Um, it really requires a lot of effort, time, and lots of patience at the same time. So in our education center, actually, because I work in an education center, so it's not really like a classroom setting. So our main goal there is to teach Chinese kids to learn English both verbally and writing. So one of the most challenging yet satisfying experiences that I've had was, um, was when I taught these Chinese students who don't have any background in English. So they are level zero learners. So they don't even know how to speak even a single word and they don't even understand even a single word as well. So the reason why is because nobody in their family speaks English as most of them are originally from mainland China. So the only language, the only language that they use are Mandarin and Cantonese. So, but the good thing is that they have the strong fighting spirit. So they never give up. If they really want to, if they want to learn something, they really push themselves to be better. And also they have the desire to interact with others. So most of my students are ages from three to five years old. So we all know that those students are really like to interact with others. They like to talk, they like to play with, with, uh, with the other kids. Also, they are lively and active and they're keen in learning the language. And of course, their weaknesses are their writing since they are level zero and they're oral speaking as well. And they don't they have the short attention span. So you as a teacher, you really have to think of something that is very interesting for them. And of course, the last one is uh, their confidence in speaking English. It's very low. So these are the practices that I did when I'm teaching them. So of course, the first one is the visual aids. So it's very important for them to see what they are learning because they are kids, they don't know English. The second one is I prepared songs and games. I integrated those because when I, when I am teaching English, or let's say, for example, those vocabulary words, I have noticed that it's easy for them to remember when, when, uh, when they sing something you know and when they are playing so um i integrated games because i want them to feel that they are just they are having fun you know there's no pressure so i want to put in their mind that oh we are learning or we're just playing games but at the same time they are learning and of course i have to provide clear tasks careful guidance so as we all know three to five years old we have to be very specific in giving instructions and I also use TPR, so like total physical response, because as they are level zero learners, I have to be more active. I have to be more energetic and lively. So if you could really come into my class, you think that it's too much, you know, <laughs> it's all a, you know, some some parents or some teachers, some other teachers that, oh, it's too much. But that's what you think. But for the students, it's just right. That's what they like. So my my main goal is to be more 
interactive with them. I want them to be more engaging, you know, to be more engaged with the class that I'm that I'm um, that I'm doing. And then, of course, I also give feedback every after the class. I also put rewards and I also have the prompt acknowledgement. Let's say, for example, they they did a good job. So I have to praise them. Oh, very good. That's nice. Keep it up. So it really boosts my confidence. And also I promote pure English environment because I always told I always tell myself that the best the best way to learn or to be to master something it's to practice. So yeah, that all, that's all, Mr. Brian. Thank you so much for having me here. Thank, and have a good day. Thank you for that story, Ma'am Wagan. Now, let's go to our next teacher, Ma'am De Los Santos. Good morning. Sir Brian, thank you for um, inviting me here on your show. So what I, will, what I will share today was just one of the challenges and opportunities that I've experienced when I was still in private school and when I handled English subject. So I encountered a student who don't have the confidence in writing using English language. She was very shy that time because she don't know where to start when I asked them to write an essay about a specific topic. So she told me that she can't accomplish a task that day. But then I asked her to talk to her, uh, that I'll talk to her in private. And then I told her not to be afraid in making mistakes because it's part of the learning process. And then I also convinced her to have a one-on-one -on -one tutorial with me so that she can overcome the fear in writing. So a few weeks have passed. She was not afraid anymore and was more eager to learn more about English. And then I found out their strengths and one of those is each of them has the eagerness to learn and then some students are active both in oral and written and they are all creative however for the weaknesses i found out that they are afraid to commit mistakes especially when it comes to their grammar also they are having their difficulty when it comes to their spelling skills and they are very confused on how to use punctuation marks. And then, sir, I've utilized the best practices that I can do for them. One is I contextualize lessons based on the students' needs and interests. And then I integrated lessons according to their real life experiences. And last is I created and produced learning materials for an interactive discussion. That's all, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ma'am De Los Santos, for that story. And now let's go with our next guest. Good morning, Mr. David. Okay, so thank you, sir, for your, uh, well, thank you. I mean, good morning. <laughs> Sorry, I'm a bit stuttery. So thank you for interviewing me about my challenges, opportunity, well, my experiences as, as an ELS teacher. So I would like to divide my ideas depending on how I experience something within my teaching So. When it comes to the challenges of teaching ELS students, mostly I teach grade 11 to grade 12 students. They're from senior high school. As we all know, senior high school students have years of experience in learning ELS. Now, even though they learned ELS over time, as we all know, as Filipino students as they go, is that they still face challenges. Either it may be they're shy, they're they're worried that they're being mocked by their classmates or fellow peers when it comes to, well, learning the secondary language, which is English. And it is far for the poor, so it happens all the time. And for the opportunity, or for me as a teacher, my opportunity is to learn from them through experiences. Their opportunity is, for me, is eventually what they will learn through their class, or at least my class, oral communication, since I teach communications through them, is that they can use it in their interviews when it comes to hiring or at least looking for a job. Now, I would like to also address different strengths and weaknesses of my students. As for their strengths, they still try to use the second language as much as possible in their homes. They do have the tendency of, well, being available through the different media or 
They can read it in their phones, they can read second language, or they can understand the second language through the use of the different mediums, maybe social media and such. They do speak or they do, uh, they do try to speak English only during my classes. I do teach online classes and this can be observed whether they're not being observed by other teachers or when it comes to just us being a class. Now, when it comes to the weaknesses, they are the same things as I have when it comes to the different challenges that they may face. Sometimes they are worried to make mistakes in their peers or in front of their other classmates. It happens all the time and it tends to affect their learning when it comes to the, EL, to the ELS or the uh, second language. They easily get flustered or confused and they may get shy. Over time, they will accomplish or at least they would learn to displace these weaknesses. But for now, they do have these tendencies. Now, even though they read the medium, they see it in their cell phones, they see it in different social medias that they have, they tend not to speak the language conversation-wise. And this is why I teach uh, oral communication. I want them to use the language as much as possible when it comes to communicating or talking with other people. Now, when it comes to best practices, as we all know, online teachers is, or as it all goes, when it comes to online teaching, you can't be face-to-face, -face, or at least in this case, you can't be physical with your students. You can't see them in front of your class. And then there are tendencies or there are problems with that. But as an ELS teacher, my best practices is we do what we refer to as a student and teacher conferences, which is I talk to them one-on-one -on -one in their works. We also perform uh, other things like I would try to understand their problems when it comes to learning the lessons. We have consultation classes or at least consultation time when I am available. And then if the students have difficulty understanding the language or, or they have difficulty in understanding what the lesson is, I would give examples. And if it's still harder for them to understand it, I'll give simpler examples so that they may be able to finally understand or at least relate themselves to the ELS language or our second language. Now, thank you, sir, for your time. Thank you very much, Mr. David, for that wonderful story. Now, let's go with our final guest, Mr. De Guzman. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, uh, Sir Vlayan, and thank you for having me here in your show. So, you know what, sir? I've been teaching for almost seven years. I started teaching in 2014, and currently I'm still teaching. I'm working as a public school teacher, teaching Filipino subjects, and I've been doing that for almost five years now. So, with that, I have decided to use my first two years of teaching experience when I was teaching in a private school so i was working as a as an english teacher that time since i am a graduate of bsa english there were actually many challenges that i faced when i was still teaching english subjects but i just picked the most important ones um versus that i believe everybody would agree to it students were not really able to express themselves fully in English and for me it's normal since English isn't really our first language so what matters is that they are really trying uh, they were really trying their best to use the language and we are motivating them to do so second is that my students before and even now they are not fond of reading they find the reading a boring and not so interesting thing which actually make them have limited vocabulary words and if they have limited vocabulary words that will result to low comprehension level and that is one of the biggest problems that we face now now for their strengths uh, my students before they were very positive and they were very open for corrections. They do not get offended whenever I give them corrections or their classmates are doing so. Then, despite difficulty and struggles, they were really trying to use the language 
inside our cla- uh, whenever we have whenever we were having our classes or whenever they were talking to me inside and outside the classroom and they show participation and enthusiasm to our classes now for the best practices that i had that i had had during that time um i had provided them with numerous reading material so that uh, whenever they had free time they could read especially when they were at home and uh, for them to be able to enrich their vocabularies then um i i was always exposing them to activities that will expose them to english language for example film viewing um role playing and other speaking activities then we also have to motivate them and make them believe in themselves uh let us always make them realize that committing mistakes is a normal thing just like um uh, one of my english teachers when i was in high school she was always reminding us that nobody is perfect even perfecto and perfecta they are not perfect so never be afraid to try so that's it that's it thank you sir thank you very much mr digusman for that amazing story that you shared as well and before we end up or wrap up this episode let me also share my response to that question The challenges that I encountered in teaching ESL include students who can't express themselves as well as the, their ideas in English which affects their output in the class. There are also students who are good in writing but not in speaking which is also considered as a challenge. For the opportunities I believe those who are trying their best to respond in English or express themselves in the second language are considered opportunities since they are open for corrections some of the strengths that i've noticed from my students includes acceptance of feedback from me and other teachers continuously trying to answer in english despite of the difficulty and acceptance for immediate corrections the weaknesses that i've uh, you know i found out from them within the five years of teaching it includes they are afraid to commit mistakes afraid to be corrected and does not accept corrections and continuously do their mistakes and these are some of my best practices i explicitly give corrections to my students i also do sampling or given multiple examples up until my students get what i'm trying to say And finally, I extend myself to my students who needs tutorials. You know, sometimes they might just be shy to ask help, but then as an educator, we must be willing to give extra time, give some effort to our young learners. And with that, thank you to all the viewers, to all the guests who have attended today with Brian. Up until next episode. See ya.